Good evening and welcome to this special Christmas Eve service from East Liberty Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Randy and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this streaming version of our family and friends Christmas service. We're grateful that you've joined us tonight and hopefully you can tell your friends to find us on Facebook or YouTube at any point, but we are streaming now. And we're also grateful for the many participants that are involved in this service. You will hear from pastors and family members and children as we share once more the good news of Christ's birth. And we're also grateful for all of our church staff, the people that have kept our ministries going over these past weeks, and especially grateful to Tim Benedict and Wayne Gaines for their help in preparing these services. If you'd like to learn more about this service or our other programs, please go to our website at elpc.church. This service is focused primarily on the Christmas story and families. It will include communion, so we hope that you can prepare some elements of bread and juice at home. And it also includes a time of singing Silent Night and lighting candles. So those would be the things that you should have with you as you watch this service. Later on tonight at eight o'clock, we will stream our traditional evening Christmas Eve service. It also will feature words from the pastors and from individuals, special music from our choir and our organist, communion, and also the lighting of candles as we sing Silent Night. That also can be found on Facebook and YouTube or for more information at our website at elpc.church. In the weeks ahead, we will have our 11 o'clock service as usual on both December 27th and January the 3rd, although we won't be having the earlier journey service for those two weeks. So again, welcome to this Christmas Eve service from our church to your home. Let us begin by sharing God's peace with one another. The paz de Cristo este honestedes. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Let us worship God. The angel said, I bring you good news of great joy, for to you a Savior is born. And, and so, so is it is with joy that, that we tell the story once more. The angel sang, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace for all. Together we sing praise to God and pray for peace. Tonight we share this good news once more. Emmanuel, God with us, has come and is coming again. With hearts filled with joy, hope, peace, and love, let us worship and praise God. Thank you. 
loving God, the Bible tells us that when Jesus was born, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. We thank you for becoming one of us to show us the fullness of your love. Open our ears so that we might hear the story of Jesus' birth with joy and find strength and hope from this good news. Help us then to tell this story, not just in words, but through our own lives. May your love be visible through us as we point to the peace you provided through the Christ child born in Bethlehem. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hello, I'm Miss Sarah, and I am so glad that you are here tonight for the time with the children. I have a couple of questions for you. Who showed you the way to tie your shoes? Was it an older sibling or a parent? Maybe a teacher helped show you the way? Who showed you the way to make a snowball? Do you remember? Who showed you the way to write your name? All right, if you're a little bit older, who showed you the way to drive a car? Now this is a question for everybody and it's a little bit harder. Who showed you the way to share or to be generous? Who showed you the way to forgive? Who showed you the way to love other people? I bet it was a lot of different people, but they all sound wonderful. Tonight, we're going to ask the question, who can show us the way to Bethlehem? Now, I think I might already know. Let's see. Hey, Google, what's the way to Bethlehem? The best way to get to Bethlehem by car is via I-76 East and will take about four hours and 19 minutes in light traffic. You can see the full route in your phone. That sounds pretty good, don't you think? No. I don't think that's what we mean either when we ask tonight who can show us the way to Bethlehem. What we mean is who can show us how to welcome the baby Jesus just like they did that first Christmas night in Bethlehem. Who can show us the way to be close to God just like they were when they could hold the baby in their arms and tickle his little baby feet. I think some of the people who can show us the way to welcome God are the people who were there in Bethlehem the first night when God came to earth, born as a baby, to show us how much God loves us. Now, we have a lot of people who are going to help us tell the story tonight. But it would be really great to have your help too. So, if you have an activity at home, that kids are allowed to play with, you can help by moving Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise people closer and closer to baby Jesus. Maybe you have some dolls or some stuffed animals that can pretend for tonight to be the characters in the story. They could be Mary and Joseph and the prophet, and they can be moved closer and closer to baby Jesus as we tell the story. Or maybe you have a paper nativity from your advent box that you can use. Maybe you'll just use your imagination to help us tell the story as you imagine what it would be like to be there with Jesus the very first night when he was born. Now that we're ready, let's tell the story. Tonight is the last night in the season of Advent, the time when we get ready to celebrate the mystery of Christmas the time when we are all on our way to Bethlehem. But who can show us the way? The prophets. Prophets listen to God so that they can show us the way. Isaiah was a prophet who listened and spoke the word of God. He said that one day the Messiah would be born, and the Messiah would be like a light shining in the darkness. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who've dwelled in a land of deep darkness, onto them light has shined. A child has been born to us. A son has been given to us. 
and authority is on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the candle of the prophets. It reminds us that the prophets like Isaiah listen to God so that they can show us the way to Bethlehem. Let's enjoy the light of the prophets. Mary and Joseph are on the way to Bethlehem too. They can show us the way. They have a secret. An angel came to them and said, do not be afraid, be joyful. You will have God's special son. You will name him Jesus. Here are Mary and Joseph. This is the candle of the Holy Family. It reminds us not to be afraid, but to be joyful on the way to Bethlehem. Let us enjoy the light of the Holy Family. The shepherds are on their way to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. They have heard good news too. When they were in the field caring for their sheep, an angel came to them and said, Do not be afraid. Be joyful. I bring you good news. Today, a Savior, God's special son, is born in Bethlehem. You will find him lying in a manger. As the shepherds were listening, the angel was joined by other angels who sang together, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among all people. This is the candle of the shepherds. It reminds us of the good news. A savior, a special son of God is born. Let us enjoy the light of the shepherds. The Magi are on the way to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. The Magi saw a special star in the sky a star for a king. They followed the star to Bethlehem, bringing gifts for the newborn king, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Here are the Magi. This is the candle of the Magi. It reminds us of gifts, of God's gift of Christ, the newborn King. Let us enjoy the light of the Magi.
Friends, hear the good news as it comes to us from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Listen to God's word. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel to angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom God favors. So when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks and praise that your love for us is so strong that you came to dwell among us as us. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, draw near to us now that as we reflect with joy on the birth of our Savior in Bethlehem, that we will know your love within us and be strengthened to share that love with others to the glory of your holy name. May the words of my mouth and the meditation on all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, for you are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, our family is not good at sending Christmas cards. My mother-in-law jokes that there aren't any post offices in Pittsburgh. And in fact, our family has created our own holiday called Happy Whatever Day. Now, this is a special holiday celebrated only with our out-of-town family when we can finally be together. Now, on this holiday, we give each other all the presents and cards we forgot to send throughout the year. Most of them, ironically, actually purchased at the right time. So we decorate and eat cake, and it says, Happy Whatever Day on it. We sing Happy Whatever Day to one another, and then we pass out presents and cards to one another. Enjoying a holiday of our own making when we can be together. Now, as with most things 2020, our Happy Whatever Day celebration has been delayed this year. We are not quite sure when it will be safe for those of us living in five different states to gather together in person again. The only thing we feel pretty sure about is that in spite of a Zoom gathering planned for Christmas morning, we will not get to pass out our Happy Whatever Day gifts in 2020. 
this unprecedented year that we have all shared. Now, because others are gracious and better at finding a nearby post office, we have in fact received a number of cards this season. And like 2020, those cards look a lot different. The cards that are usually covered in family photos, highlighting vacations and milestone events include families masked outside of their own homes. A cousin wrote in a card to our family, I look forward to seeing you all in the new year, hopefully. One printed greeting even says in gold shining letters, 2020, a year to remember. These cards mark the reality that we are living through unprecedented times. 2020 has been a year to remember for many reasons. Often friends who are fellow parents have said to me, you know what? Our kids are going to learn about this year in their high school history class. It's true. We haven't seen a year quite like this when, whether speaking of national politics or racial unrest, or the impact on all of our lives from a global pandemic has all happened at once or at all. But these greeting cards mark that mark that in spite of 2020 being itself, life goes on. Our stories continue and God's story continues. Hope remains. We still can celebrate the good news of this season. Yes, masked and at a distance, but even a pandemic cannot stop a celebration of Christ's birth. Good news remains good news. See, a child was born in Bethlehem and this child was named Emmanuel, God with us. And our greeting cards still show the images of those so long ago who themselves lived through unprecedented times. As the Christ child made his entrance into this world, when God took on flesh and dwelt among us. Now, Mary and Joseph surely would not have sent out a greeting card that year if greeting cards were a thing at that time. See, some great aunt or neighbor down the road would have done the math and realized that Mary's expectant belly began to take shape well before she and Joseph were ever officially married. The shepherds would not have gone live on Facebook when the angelic chorus sent them running to Bethlehem. See, their bosses would have known that they had abandoned their posts, leaving sheep they were tending alone in the fields at night. And the Magi surely would not have taken a selfie with the Christ child to mark this event. Herod might have used face recognition software and details in the back of the photo to track down the Messiah and enact his nefarious plot. Yet see, in these unprecedented times over 2,000 years ago, God came to us. And a baby was born in a backroom major in an unattended birth during a census. The scene was complicated. It was difficult. And for many, unbelievable. The world had not been in this place before. And many did not even know that the hope for which they waited had been born that day. See, in unprecedented times over 2,000 years ago, God took on our flesh. God assumed our humility, our vulnerability, our need to be with one another. God took on flesh and was in that baby subject to plans of politicians dependent on the makeshift hospitality of strangers, the blessing of outcasts and the care of parents with little to offer, but courage and faith and love. See, in unprecedented times, God came to us in Christ, embodying for all of us the hope of salvation, the peace of reconciliation, the joy of acceptance and the love of being claimed ourselves as members of the family of God. 
Our Christmas cards and Advent calendars and holiday pageants and carols tell this story too. For this unprecedented story is not just a parable or a myth that inspires us to love, but a reality that shapes our lives here and now today. See, we are a part of this story because we are those Christ came to save. We too are those Christ called to serve. We are those Christ came to forgive and welcome and claim and teach and heal and love. My prayer is that these unprecedented times might not only be marked by illness, by division, by injustice, My prayer is that these unprecedented times will not only be marked by the headlines of 2020, but of the unprecedented love of a God who is love. May this love shape us today. May it convict us, relieve us, inspire us, teach us, heal us, and show us the way forward. May this love fill us up with so much hope that we too will find the courage to navigate these unprecedented times with the faith of all who gathered in Bethlehem all those years ago. For this good news is the source of our hope too. It is this good news that gives us the strength to enact justice, to speak up and welcome the outcast. It is this good news that gives us the ability to keep on keeping on. It is this good news that encourages us to love as we have been loved. For even when we are setting a table for fewer people this year, or watching worship on a computer screen. God is with us too. The reality of the incarnation is our reality too. Even in 2020, God is with us. The light has come into this world. And no darkness has been able to snuff out that light. Friends, for unto us is born this day in Bethlehem, a Savior who is Christ our Lord. May all glory and honor and praise be to Christ now and forever. Amen. Together we have had the good news of Jesus' birth. Together we have received God's precious gift to all of us. We respond in faith and offer our gifts too as an act of worship, thanks, and praise. With joyful hearts, let us now receive this evening's offering. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are amazed by your love for us. As you entered this world in Christ, We pray that we may respond to this precious gift with the courage of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the praise of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds, and the generosity of the Magi. May our joy and our generosity mark our celebration, not only today, but every day. In the name of the Christ child, we pray. Amen.
beloved siblings in Christ, tonight we remember and celebrate the birth of Christ, Emmanuel, God who came to us in human flesh as a helpless baby. A group of poor shepherds were the first invited to witness this birth of the Christ child. They were not highly educated. They had no gifts to bring. They did not have fancy clothes. Yet an angel proclaimed to them, a savior has been born to you. Tonight we come unworthy as well to witness and receive God's amazing gifts of grace, peace, joy, and love. You're invited to come to this table, the joyful feast of the Lord. It is not a Presbyterian table or the table of this congregation. It is the table of Jesus Christ. All who wish to know and love him are welcome here. Whether your faith is strong or wavering, whether you come to church often or have never been before, whether you are near or far, you are welcome here. Tonight, a Savior is born for you, and that same Savior welcomes you to this sacred meal. As we prepare now to celebrate the Lord's Supper, I invite you to join me in this great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is good to give you thanks, O God, the source of abundant life. In Jesus is your eternal word, the reflection of your glory. In him you became one with us, that we might become one with you. We thank you for Jesus who proclaimed your dream of peace. Christ gave himself for our weary world, accepting death so that we might live and setting us free for love. So remembering Christ's death and resurrection and longing for his coming in glory, we offer now these gifts of bread and wine, and we offer our lives in thanks and praise. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may become the body and the blood of our Savior Christ. Pour out your spirit upon us that we may become people of grace and truth. May we bear your good news of joy in every season and then bring us at the last with Mary and Joseph and with all your saints to that vision of eternal splendor for which you've created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, O God, with our songs of everlasting praise and the prayers of Christmas Eve. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread and he shared it with his disciples, with his friends and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after he had finished supper with his disciples, he took the cup and giving thanks. He shared the cup with his disciples and said to them, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. A scripture tells us that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus until he comes again in glory. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Together, let us keep the feast.
friends, the body of Christ, the bread of life for you, take and eat and know the goodness of God. Friends, this is the cup of salvation for you. Take and drink and know that God is good. Amen. In Jesus, you took on flesh and lived among us to show us the fullness of your love. We thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us, not just today, but every day. By your grace, dwell with us, fill us with your hope, strengthen us to serve you, and equip us to share your good news through the living of our lives and the love we share with all. Hear these words from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What came into being through him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of God's only son, full of grace and truth. Friends, we light our candles, giving thanks that Christ, the light of the world, has come to us in a babe wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. It is Jesus who reigns in our hearts and in our world today. And so with the angels, let us sing. Alleluia to our King. Christ, the Savior is born. Christ, the Savior is born.
Friends, the good news is ours today. For a babe that was born in Bethlehem all those years ago is our Savior, Christ our Lord. Know that this babe that was born in a manger is God with us today too. May the love of God fill your hearts with hope. May the love of God inspire you to serve. May the love of God fill your hearts and homes with joy, trusting that even in these unprecedented times, God is with us still. So friends, may the blessing of our almighty God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, rest and abide with you this day and always. May the Prince of Peace bring you peace. Go now to love and serve and enjoy our saving God. And Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you.